Welcome to FPTV New Releases and uh, welcome to my special guest, Mr. Tim Levin. It's great to see you again, mate. How are you? Yeah, Andrew. Nice to see you again. Always, you always a pleasure, mate. Always okay. a pleasure. Now, yeah. for those of you who don't know this glorious information, uh, Tim is the New York Times best-selling author of Cold Brook, The Silence and the Relics Trilogy. Uh, his book, The Silence, has, has been turned into a Netflix original movie with his doppelganger, Stanley Tucci. <laughs> What was it like meeting Stanley Tucci, mate? Oh, it was great. He was such a lovely guy. So, so nice. And um, didn't have long to talk with him. It was like sitting outside uh, the, the area where we were shooting a certain scene. So I sat with him for a little while. Um, he just wanted to hear about me, not the other way around. Uh, he, was, he was so, so lovely. And Kieran Shipka was lovely too. We, the three of us had a, had a good chat. It was great. And then I became a corpse and Stanley had to step over me so that was uh, that was my acting debut and i've ah. never been sent any scripts since unfortunately. <laughs> well i mean surely a career of stanley cameos awaits though do you know what i mean just I'll, gotta wait I'll, for the I'll, next I'll, adaptation it'll be great yeah every <laughs> film he makes from now on I'm a oh yeah character. you turn up in that, <laughs> that, that'd be so wonderful yeah I, I, I like uh, also like uh, tim has uh, recently written uh, a, a great um, an, an epic actually a uh, Firefly novel for Titan Books. He's he's done a bunch of stuff for our colleagues at Titan Books. He worked in the Star Wars universe. He's just written Firefly Generations, which is uh, out in November 2020 on the 3rd of November. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's also won a, an absolute boatload of British fantasy awards. He's won a Bram Stoker Award. He's won a Shocker of Tombstone. He's been a finalist for the International Horror Guild and the World Fantasy Awards. There's no award that this guy hasn't been nominated for or won. This is true. It's nice of you to say he's been a finalist for, because that yeah. obviously means I didn't win them. But being, <laughs> on, the, being <laughs> yeah. on the short list is as good as winning, really. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Right. When you think most people never get to be that close to these yeah, things. Nice, so, you know. nice. No, it, it is an absolute win. And uh, Firefly Generations, by the way, is is the third of Titan Books Firefly uh, original novels, and it's fantastic. Really, does it explore a really important but um, but under um, explored element of the Firefly universe or the Firefly verse, in fact. Um, but what? But there we go. See, this is my this is my uh, and my nod to uh, all the, all the, all my Firefly chums out there. But I'm a leaf in the wind, as we say. So, uh, moving on from that, though, what we're here to talk about is uh, Tim's epic novel, Eden. There it is. There it is right there, which was uh, published by Titan in April 2020. Um, it's available for order from the links attached to this uh, interview. Um, such an amazing book. What can you tell us about it, Tim? Yeah, it, so Eden's a sort of a... Co it coalesces everything, lots of stuff that I love and am passionate about. So it's, I really love nature. I'm really concerned and interested and, and, you know, read too much about the climate crisis. Um, I love horror and killing people and um, uh, in my writing mainly. And uh, I also love endurance sport. So uh, I do marathons and crazy Ironman races and shit like that. So I wanted to sort of merge them all into one really exciting story. Um, and I've also been told that I... Uh, and I don't consciously think about this, but I love chase stories. And in a way, this is another chase story. Um, so it's set, it's near future in a, in a world where the climate crisis, we've hit tipping point and gone over. So uh, it's, it's even worse than, than we could anticipate. Um, so, the sometime world, in the next six months, then, mate. Next six months to a year. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, it's a world where I hope David Attenborough is still alive, although I don't yeah. know him. Um, uh, and it's... Uh, it's, but, but there's a positive side to it. So, it. so in this world where the climate crisis is, is tipped over the edge, the world's come together and created these areas around the planet that they've given back to nature, and they call them virgin zones. So there's, I think there's 13 areas all around the planet. And the first and the oldest of these areas is called Eden. Um, um, handily enough, that's the title of the book. And so the story is about an adventure racing team who decide that Eden is the sort of prime real estate for them to be the first team to race across but they once they get in there they realize that nature's re-established itself in in surprising ways and um stuff happens yeah <laughs> fantastic and we, we don't want to get into spoiling that not you too want much. The, you want you want the flavor of the book 
so so it's clearly a lot of issues that uh, are important yeah. to you tied up in one place uh, now i think it's relatively rare to speak to an author who is into um endurance sports and who does ironman events it's very common to speak to an author who likes like smoking 20 marlboro and having seven pints yeah, but i, I think you, you might yeah. I still do the drinking thing. Yeah, oh yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, you're only human, right? Yeah. You know, it, but uh, but if you were, uh, yeah, I think you're probably occupying a relatively you know, small subset. Um, and how much that? How much does that? How much do those interests in fitness, the Iron Man stuff, align with? Because it seems to me it's quite a solitary thing to do. I know you're competing with other people, but your yeah. training, I imagine, is fairly solitary. As is the act of writing a book, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I've I've said many. Um, so first of all, the exercise um, helps me creatively by clearing my headspace. So it's very rare. Uh, so I did like a thirty-two mile bike ride today, but I didn't turn over any story ideas in my head. But I came back with a sort of cleared headspace, ready to ready to tackle another you know plot problem or something. So that's that's how it helps me creatively. But also, I've I've always said writing a novel is like racing an Ironman because at the beginning you're really excited but nervous and then so first part of an Ironman is a swim so you jump in you start swimming you think oh great I'm off first three yeah. chapters yay and it's going really well and then the middle part of the Ironman is is the 112 mile bike ride and halfway through that you think oh what am I what was <laughs> I thinking it was I like, did I ever think this would be a good idea I must be mad and this is I'm never going to finish I'm just not going to finish then you finish the bike ride two thirds of the way through the novel. And then all you got left is the marathon, which is like, the, I hate to use the word sprint because that never happens, but it's like a sprint towards the end. Um, and crossing the finish line and writing the end is just one of the biggest highs in the world. The only difference is you don't get to redo the Iron Man to make it better. But you know, once you've written the first draft of the novel, you can go back and tweak it. So big similarities, yeah. I think that's a, a, a glorious analogy. <laughs> and um, what I really love about it is that, you know, you, you actually segue it into, and then all you've got left is the marathon, <laughs> yeah. which is one of the few times you ever hear anybody say that. You know, it's that's ridiculous. the only yeah. bit, it was the marathon. It's crazy. But it, it, it's sort of, um, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll say to 80% of people I meet, they could do an Ironman if they wanted to. And the best advice I had uh, before my first one, I've done a few now, before my first one was, it's not a marathon, it's an Ironman run. And that just changes it psychologically because generally you get off the bike and you think, oh, I've nearly, I've nearly finished. And you've, you know, you've got a five hour run left to do. Um, yeah. You know, it's never, it's never much shorter. Than that. But, but it's, you know, it's the, you're on the home stretch then. And it sort of, it sort of feels like that at the end of a novel. Um, I remember writing the end of Eden, the last few chapters I wrote, you know, I'll, I'll do 2000 words a day if I'm in the saddle on a novel, but, but finishing Eden, if it's 4,000 words a day, and I think it's so you were just, it was it was hemorrhaging out of you. I was excited to get to the end, uh, yeah. uh, and often I'm I'm not I'm not a massive planner, so I was excited to get to the end to find out what happened, which is a bit weird when you're writing a book. You sort of know roughly, but not not hundred percent, you know. So it's a good it's 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 the way I work. Some people don't some plan in huge detail. I I plan in just dribs and drabs, to be honest. So yeah. So, so when you when you're pursuing your, your fitness regime and whatnot, I mean you're you're um, you're really well known for having a, a great sort of horror voice, yeah. Mm. And in fact, there's there's a I'm sure you've seen this, but there's just a brilliant um, Guardian quote about your work, which is um, uh, Tim is a master of drip feeding, horror and suspense. Yeah, which is, yeah. it's a lovely uh, and that must be great to read yeah. that. Yeah, it's a nice quote that. Yeah. It's a great quote, but it's also true. Uh, and so it is part of the engine room of that process when you have these, when you're, when you're doing the, your fitness events, and, you know, because you're, you're there inside your own head for a long period of time. Does yeah. that help you gestate any of this stuff? Or, or, or is that really just done in the writing room and, and you've got a different focus when you're, when you're training and when you're, you know? I, I think subconsciously it probably helps massively. Yeah. Uh, like, like I said, it's not, it's not often, I mean, it does happen that I'll be out on the bike or running or whatever, doing a bit of training and, and, and suddenly have a, a bolt out of the blue, either for something I'm working on or an idea for something new. And so occasionally I'll be stopped halfway up a hill on the bike with my phone, trying to 
trying to tap in a uh, note because I wear contact lenses and I'm short sighted and I can't see my phone. So I'm like this trying to tap in notes. That happens sometimes, but it, it, it's more, um, it's useful to get away from the desk sometimes and get away from the computer and, and get, get away from what you're working on, I think, um, because that gives you subconscious time to work. So, um, so I, I think probably it helps me massively subconsciously which means i don't really know how much it helps me but it does and uh, and i know that it does i know i know that getting out for a run or a ride or um or whatever i do just sort of fires me up ready to work and it suggests to me that as a writer you have a, a tremendous amount of discipline actually because you've got to be disciplined to walk away from the desk and make yourself exercise right um yeah mostly i mean i'm I, I'm a sort of nine to five ish writer because that fits around family life. Um, my kids are older now. My daughter's 22 this year. My boy's 17, but she's, she's home. She's finished uni uh, because of lockdown and COVID. So she's home working. My son's doing A levels. My wife works from home. So it's, I'm a sort of nine to five writer. I love, I love the idea of getting up at six in the morning and start writing, but it never happens because I need my sleep as well. Um, as for the discipline, yes, sometimes like, like today, about 2.30, I looked at the weather forecast and it was a beautiful day today. And the next few days are crap. So I went out on the bike and blew the afternoon's work. Uh, that doesn't, honestly, that doesn't happen that much. I'm usually fairly, I usually fairly disciplined and think I need to get a day's work in. And then occasionally I'll exercise first thing in the morning, but usually it's, it's after work. Yeah, that, I mean, that's all really interesting. And now that, you know, Eden has been out there, um, uh, in the in the public domain for a couple of months and we're, you know again you can order it right here um have you been pleased with the response mate? yeah i mean it it's um it, it it's got some great reviews and people who've read it really enjoyed it it's nice it's nice to see um i'm hoping it has a long uh, long life in the bookshops it launching in april or may of 2020 wasn't the most ideal launch date for for reasons you understand you know i should have been on tour for it and i should have been doing conventions and signings and so none of that's happened i've done i've done quite a few things like this various you know uh i think i did the chimera thing the the edinburgh festival and uh i just did something a few days ago for the bristol literature festival so i've done panels and things but there's nothing like meeting people at book signings and shops and, and conventions um, but I, I, it's it's in it's on the table in my little local Waterstones, still out there on the table, oh, nice. Really. So I'm really hoping shops keep stocking it for a little while and give it more of a chance, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just uh, yeah. I, I I get a bit worried about it sometimes, but then in the scheme of things, with everything else that's going on, it doesn't really matter. But it is still out there, you know. And uh, I I think I think I honestly think it's one of the best things. I've written I know most people say that I really do feel that so well yeah. well mate I, I completely agree with you and and I think a that that is undoubtedly the answer of a positive that's a positivist that's a very positive yeah. outlook on the on the, on the <laughs> whole scenario but one thing we can guarantee is you know is uh we will be stocking uh this epic book throughout the pandemic however long it may last here at Forbidden Planet you can order it from the link attached to this, to this uh, interview. And uh, if, you, if you pick this book up, you are really going to enjoy it. It's a, it's a fantastic piece of work. Cheers, uh, Andrew. And Tim, thanks so much for joining me, man. Well, thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's been it's, great. It's always great. You take care of yourself. Yeah, and you. Cheers, Andrew. Yeah, thanks, brother. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.